everyone and welcome back to the channel. My name is Brittany of BrittanyJJones.com. If this is your first time tuning in to the channel, welcome. I hope that you will like what you see and subscribe below for more. Excuse the look, y'all. I've been running errands all day and I just came back in to sit and edit this video that you're watching right now and I was like, I haven't done my intro yet. So again, welcome. I'm really excited about today's uh, sew along. Today we are sewing. We're sewing along to Simplicity 9326. I made a big B on this pattern. I used a rayon fabric from Melanated Fabrics. Um, it was my intention to edit the fabric and get it on the website so that you all can shop it. I don't have it up there just yet, but hopefully tomorrow um, I will take time and edit some of the new fabrics that we have in stock. So definitely come back and check that link <laughs> to see the new fabrics, or I'll just put it in a community post. That way you all will know that it's live. But I love the way this dress turned out. I was pleasantly pleased with it. I will say why I was sewing it. Um, I was sewing it late last night. I did get a little frustrated with the ruffle. I was like, I don't even know why I'm adding this ruffle. <laughs> I don't even like ruffles. And then I put it on this morning. I was like, I love it. <laughs> I'm really, again, in love with this dress. I love the way it turned out. Um, so I hope that you all will enjoy the video. If you want to know the size that I cut out, definitely watch this video right here. I did remember to record a little bit of me grading between the pattern sizing, um, and that's at the front of the video, but make sure that you watch all the way to the end because I did put some final pics of me wearing the dress, and yeah, let's get started. To begin, the first thing that we're going to do is working with our front pattern piece number one. You should have transferred some notches along the side. We're going to stitch between the notches along the side. So I don't know if you can see I have a notch here. I have a notch here as well. I'm just going to stitch right between these notches. You can stitch along your seam line. I'm going to go a little smaller than my seam line, so I'm going to stitch on about a half of an inch. Go ahead and do your stitches now, again on pattern piece number one, between your notches. Okay, once you have done your stitch along the side of your bodice front between your notches, it's kind of hard to see mine because I'm using coordinating thread, but you can see a little bit of my stitch there. We can go ahead and put the front to the side and you want to grab your bodice side front. This here is pattern piece number two. And what we're gonna do is we need to reinforce here along the front and we also need to do a little bit of stay stitching. All right, so with your bodice side front, again, pattern piece number two, we're gonna do stay stitching along the neck edge here at a half inch seam allowance. You should have transferred a small dot here as well. We do need to do some reinforcing here at this dot. So about an inch above the small dot, as well as going toward, you should have a line so here's a look at the pattern right here. You should see some stitching lines. We need to reinforce along these lines, reinforce that small dot. So then we'll be able to clip to it, but not clip through it. Go ahead and do that now on your fabric on both of your side front pieces. Okay, I've just done my stay stitching as well as reinforced. Now I'm gonna grab my scissors and I can clip into the inner corner. Again, you just want to clip to the circle, do not clip through it. Okay, now we can go ahead and grab our bodice front. 
First, I'm gonna trim some of my threads away. Okay, go ahead and grab your bodice front. Make sure that you have it going in the right direction. You should have your notches down here toward the bottom. And you should also be matching up your notches here to the notches on your bodice side front. So with right sides facing, I'm going to start to pin in place, matching up my notches. Okay, once you have it pinned, we can go ahead and stitch on a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. You can choose if you want to finish off your seams or not. We are going to be adding a lining, so it's not necessary to serge your seams. So go ahead and do your stitching, and we can move on to the next step. Okay, now that you have your side front sewn to your front, you want to press your seams going toward the front, so press them going toward the inside. We can go ahead and sit this to the side and start to work on our back. Okay, taking our side back, you should have transferred a circle here. We need to reinforce here. So to reinforce, we're going to do the same exact way. You want to stitch about an inch above and an inch below going through the dot to reinforce it. Okay, now that we have our side bags reinforced here at our dot, now you want to grab your center back and you want to match these up right sides facing. Make sure that you don't mix up the side seam and the center back of your back piece because they both have dots at the top. One is a little bit larger and one is smaller. This larger dot matches up to our dot here that we transferred on the side back. So just make sure that you try to keep everything together. Don't get anything confused and definitely make sure that you match up your notches that you transferred. So with right sides facing, this one goes here going to match up my double notches here, match up my small dots. And we're going to pin that in place. And then this one goes here. All right, now once you have a pan, go ahead and stitch it in place using a 5 8 of inch seam allowance, and then we can press our seam going toward the center back. Okay, after you have your side back and back stitched together and you have pressed your seam going toward the center back, now we want to pan our shoulders together, right sides facing. So I'm going to grab my front here, and again, right sides facing, I'm going to lay that over the center back. I'm going to match up my shoulders, and I'm going to pin in place. Once you have your shoulders pinned, we can go ahead and stitch them on a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. Okay, after you have sewn your shoulder seams together, you can give your seams a press. And you can go ahead and stitch your lining the same exact way that you did for your main fabric. So here is my lining here. I went ahead and stitched my side front to my front and my side back to my back. And I stitched them together at the shoulder seam. So I just repeated those same steps that we did for the bodice. I did those for the lining as well. Now we can start to work on the ruffle. Okay, I have my ruffles here. I'm gonna go ahead and remove my pattern pieces. Make sure that you transfer your notches. These will let you know the front from the back. The single notch is for the front. The double notch is for the back. The first thing that we want to do is do two rows of gathering stitches along the upper edge of our ruffles. Now you should have also transferred some small dots. We're gonna be doing the gathering stitches between the small dots. Make sure that you don't go past them because if you go past them, now you're working into your seam allowance and we wanna make sure that we're just stopping at the dot. So from dot to dot, go ahead and do two rows of gathering stitches. For gathering stitches, we use our basting stitch. My machine goes up to a five, some machines go up to a six. So just lengthen out your stitch from the standard 2.5, lengthen it out to your basting stitch, and just do two rows of basting stitches again between the small dots that you transferred on the upper edge of your ruffles. Okay, I've just put the two rows of basting stitches along the upper edges of all of my ruffle pieces here. And so now we can go ahead and pin them together right sides facing. 
So this right here is my front ruffle here. I'm gonna grab a shoulder ruffle, match that up right size facing. Wait, that doesn't match. Well, let me try this side here. Maybe it matches to this one. Okay, make sure that you match up your notches. Look for your double and single notches. Here are my single notches here, and I'm just gonna put one pin to hold that in place. Okay, once you have them all pinned, we can go ahead and stitch at a 5 eighth of an inch seam allowance. So let's go ahead and stitch our ruffles together now. Okay, I have my ruffles all sewn together. I also finished off my seam allowance with my serger. The next thing for us to do is to go ahead and do our hem on our ruffle. So on the back, we do have the opening here. We want to do narrow hems and not just a regular 5 8 of an inch narrow hem. We want to do a baby hem, also known as a designer hem. It's really, really narrow. To do that, the first thing that you want to do is fold over a quarter of an inch of fabric and we're gonna stitch really close to this fold here. So again, fold over just a quarter of an inch, stitch really close to that fold, after you have it stitched, then you're going to trim away the excess fabric and then you want to fold that again and stitch on top of the previous stitch. I'm going to go to my machine and show you how to do this one and then I'm going to do the rest off camera just because it will be a little bit time consuming, um, but I'm going to go ahead and just knock the rest out on camera, but I do want to show you all what I'll be doing. Okay, so I just have on my regular presser foot here. However, if you have a narrow hem foot, this would be the perfect time to grab it. Let me take mine out. I've never opened it before. So this is what that presser foot looks like. As you can see, it has this little spiral here on the end. So it's going to automatically roll in and give me that really tiny narrow hem. And here's a look at what it does on the back of this little card here. So you can see just how narrow this little foot can roll it over and stitch it in place. But you can also achieve the same thing with your regular presser foot. So first, again, just fold over a quarter of an inch. Like so. And I'm just eyeballing it. You can definitely get your seam gauge out or ruler to measure it and give yourself an accurate quarter of an inch so I'm just folding that over like so and I'm going to stitch really close to this fold here okay I've just again folded over a quarter of an inch and I've stitched really close to the fold now I'm going to grab my scissors I'm going to trim down the excess fabric here if you have duck bill scissors you can also use your little trimmers those will be good just because this is really tight and you don't want to accidentally cut your main fabric. So just take your time and again, trim really close or as close as you can to your stitch. Okay, I've trimmed it down. So this is what it looks like here. It's really, really tiny. I hope you all can see just how tiny that is. So again, I just trimmed away the excess fabric and now you just want to fold it over. You can absolutely give it a press if you want to go press it. Just go ahead and fold that over like so. And now we can stitch right here along our first stitch. Okay, so this is what my stitch looks like on the inside. And this is what my stitch looks like on the outside of the fabric. I hope you all can see that. If you can get yours closer to the fold, even better. Mine is kind of somewhat in the middle, but this is the baby narrow hem that we're going to be doing on the other back opening, as well as along the lower edge of the ruffle. So go ahead and do both of your backs in the lower ruffle and we'll move on to the next step. All right, I got my ruffle sewn. That took every bit of 10 to 15 minutes. And I put on my narrow hem foot to kind of test that out a little bit, but ultimately I went back to my regular pressing foot 
and I didn't even fold over and stitch. I just did like a really tiny double fold and stitched it down because it just became super tedious and yeah, I just gave it a good press. So now I'm gonna grab my bodice front. So it's gonna be right size up of the bodice and right size up of the ruffle. And our large circles that we transfer, they match up to the large circles that we transfer on the side bodice to the bodice. So we're gonna be matching up those corners and those circles where we again transferred our large circle. Right here on the back though, we want to measure this and you should have transferred a small circle back here. We want to pull up our basting stitches on the back so that it meets right here and it stops before we get to the very end because again, we have to install a zipper so it needs to stop right there at that uh, large circle. You don't wanna go past it. So I'm just gonna start to match up my large circles, pulling up the gathers and pinning the ruffle in place. Okay, I have the ruffle panned on, as you can see here. And now I'm gonna go to the sewing machine Baste it in place along the back ruffle. We are going to just baste it to within two inches of the end. So I'm going to remove some pins because I don't want to baste it too close. So I'm just going to stop it there. We're going to finish this portion a little bit later, but for right now, don't baste it all the way closed or baste it all the way to that large circle on the back. Just baste it to within a few inches of the edge. So again, I'm just going to baste from here all the way along basting the ruffle in place. Okay, I have the ruffle basted on, so now we're gonna go ahead and grab our lining. I have my lining here and I'm gonna place it over, right sides facing like so. You wanna make sure that your ruffle is between both layers. And I'm just gonna begin pinning in place all the way around. And remember, we do not wanna go all the way to the end back here at the back. We're gonna close this portion up after we have the zipper installed. So make sure that you don't go all the way to the back with your pinning. Go ahead and match up your shoulder seams and start to pin in place. Okay, I have my lining pinned over my main fabric as well as the ruffle. And now I'm gonna begin stitching it in place. I'm gonna start here at the back. Again, we're not going all the way to the end. We're gonna do that part after we have the zipper installed. So I'm just gonna start right here at the back, back stitch, pivot, and go all the way around, pivoting till I get to the other end. And I'm gonna stop the same way. And then I'm going to do under stitching. So let's go ahead and do our stitch and our under stitch, and we can flip everything right side out. Okay, I have my lining stitched on toward the inside. I just need to give everything a really good press. Once I give everything a really good press, it'll lay nice and neat. I'm also gonna go back in and trim my seams. I haven't trimmed those just yet, and I didn't trim them because we still need to put everything right sides facing. So you wanna make sure you bring your lining back over like so. And we need to stitch around our armhole. So go ahead and grab your pins, tuck in your ruffle, and match up your seams, match up your raw edges. And again, we're going to pin and stitch around our armholes. Okay, I'm going to pin the other armhole the same way. Again, make sure that you have the ruffle tucked out of the way. You don't want to accidentally stitch that. And we can just stitch our armhole at a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. After you have it stitched, then you can do all of your trimming. I'll do my trimming around the neck edge as well. And then you want to clip into your curves. 
Okay, I've just stitched around my armhole. I trimmed all of my seams and now I'm turning it right side out. So I'm just pulling my back through the shoulders like so. You also want to do understitching along the armhole as far as you can go. So just continue pulling this out. Okay, once you have it pulled out, you can go ahead and give everything a really good press and then we can stitch our sides together. Okay, after you have done your understitching along your armholes and after you have given everything a press, I'm gonna press mine one more time to make sure that everything is nice and flat. The next thing for us to do is to put everything right sides facing. So I'm just gonna bring my backs over the front once we do this stitch, everything should be a little bit better. I, I kind of feel like the pieces are all over the place. And I think it's just because the sides are not sewn yet. Okay, so with right sides facing, we're going to grab the fabric pieces here. And we're going to open it out so the lining pieces are up here. So it will look like this, one continuous stitch. Basically, I just opened out the lining from the main fabric. So I'm gonna fold it again, cause that can be kind of tricky. I'm going to lift up that lining and I'm gonna lift up the lining up under it. So it is like so, you should be able to see your seam right here. We're gonna pin there. We're going to pin at our notches and pin down the whole seam. You want to do the same thing for the other side and now we're just going to stitch in one continuous stitch stitching the lining and stitching the main fabric so we're going to do one continuous stitch on both sides now Okay, you want to go ahead and flip your lining back to the inside, give that a press, give your whole bodice one final press and start to just trim away some of the excess threads and clean it up. If you have any loose threads, I'm going to give mine another press, especially right here at the front, just to make sure that the lining is going into the inside nice and clean. After you do that, now we can put the bodice to the side and start to work on the skirt. For the skirt pieces, I've actually already started to stitch mine together, but you want to stitch pattern piece number eight to pattern piece number seven. So this is my back, this is my side back here, and this is the other back and side back. So these both right here are pattern piece number seven, and this right here is pattern piece number eight. So stitch those together, and then you want to do the same thing for your front. So for my front here, I have my side fronts stitched to my front. Make sure that you match up your notches. You should have transferred some notches that are matching up, especially on the back, because you have some double notches and you have some single notches. So it's important to make sure that you're matching up the right notches when you are stitching them together. So again, this is my side front to my front. And along this side here, I stopped at the large circle that we transferred and backstitched to have our split in the front. So this is what it looks like along the inside. I press this seam toward the front. I press this seam open since this is where the slit is here. I finished off my seams with the serger. And then again, here's a look at the back pieces. This is my side, this is the back. Finish that off with the serger, same thing for this one. And I press my seam going toward the side front. So go ahead and stitch your skirt pieces together. And once you have them stitched, now we can lay them right sides facing and pin them along the side seam. So I have I'm laying my back over my front. Here's my front here. This is the back. I'm laying it over right sides facing. I'm going to match up my notches here along the side. I'm going to pin there. 
and continue pinning down the seam and I'm going to do the other side seam the exact same way. Okay, I have my skirt sewn together. I have my side seams of my skirt sewn. You can go ahead and give your side seams a press once you have them sewn. And the next thing for us to do is to stitch our bodice to the skirt. Okay, I have my bodice here. You want to make sure that you lift up the lining and keep the lining out of the way so that it's not accidentally getting stitched up in your seam. And now you just want to match up all of your seams with your bodice to your skirt. So with right sides facing, go ahead and grab your pins and we can start to pin it in place. Again, make sure that you are matching up your seams because they will show. So you want to make sure that they are matched up really nicely after you have it sewn together, match up all your notches as well. Okay, now that you have your bodice pinned to your skirt, we can go ahead and stitch it in place and make sure that you keep your lining free. After you have it stitched, you can finish off your seam allowance if you like. We are gonna be slip stitching the lining over the seam, so you have the option to just leave your seam raw. But after you have it stitched, go ahead and press it going up toward the bodice. All right, friends, I now have my bodice and skirt sewn together right here at the waistline seam. I did go ahead and finish off my seam allowance. It's just a habit. And I pressed my seam going up to my bodice. I also went ahead and added a little bit of interfacing back here on the center seam. I did this because I want to stabilize the zipper area a little bit. That is a high stress point with us constantly zipping and unzipping the dress. So whenever you can add a little bit of stability, that just helps with the longevity of the dress and keeping everything nice and neat on the inside of your garment. So this is just a lightweight fusible interfacing. I cut a strip on this side and fused it as well as to the other side of the dress and fused it. So you wanna go ahead and grab your zipper. We need an 18 inch zipper. All I have is this 20, so I will shorten it. The first thing that we want to do is on the outside of our dress, make sure that you have your ruffle out of the way. You don't wanna accidentally stitch your ruffle in it. But on the outside of our dress, we just want to take one side of our zipper face down. So this is the right side of the zipper. I have it face down going toward the dress. And I'm just going to line mine up here at the top. We want to have our coils on the 5 8 of an inch stitching line. So if you don't know exactly where the 5 8 of an inch line is, you can just transfer, get a ruler, and just, you know, make a 5 8 of an inch stitching line. That way you know you're putting your coils right on top of the stitching line. Or you can just adjust that once you get to your sewing machine. And you want the zipper top to be three-fourths of an inch from the top here. Keep in mind that we do still need to sew over the lining and the ruffle and close everything up. So you don't want to have the top of the zipper exactly lined up with the raw edge. You want to make sure that you have it down a little bit so you'll be able to finish off the top edge of the dress. So once you have it lined up, you can go ahead and pin the zipper in place. If you prefer, you can hand baste it in place. Then you can go to your sewing machine if you have it basted or pinned and just stitch really close to the coils. If you have an invisible zipper foot, this is the perfect time to use it. If not, while you're stitching, you just need to push the coils over so that you get really close to the zipper teeth. And that way it'll be nice and invisible using a regular zipper foot. So I'm gonna go to my sewing machine now and go ahead and stitch down this side of the zipper tape. Okay, friends, I have one side of the zipper installed. Make sure that you back stitch at the beginning and the end of your stitch. So let's move on to the next side. We're going to repeat those same steps. Now for this one over here, I really want to make sure that I have my waistline seam matching up. So I'm going to close my zipper up here. And I'm going to place a mark 
over on this side right here where the waistline seam is. I want to make sure that I match that up on the other side as well so that everything is nice and even. So I'm going to pin and make sure that I have that in place. Okay, so now go ahead, put some pins into your zipper or you can hand baste it in place and we're gonna stitch this side the same exact way we did this side. Make sure you keep your ruffle and lining free. Back stitch at the beginning and at the end of your stitch while you're stitching on this side of the zipper tape. Let's do that now. All right, I have just installed my zipper. So I'm gonna zip it up to see how everything looks. All right, I have my zipper installed. This is what it looks like here. This is what it looks like right here at this waist seam. I really like it. Okay, now we can go ahead and close up our center back seam down here at the bottom around the lower edge. So with right sides facing, go ahead and grab the remaining center seam here below your zipper and we need to close this up. So with right sides facing, I'm gonna start to pin it in place. So now we need to come right here beside the stitch where we stop stitching our zipper in place. We're just gonna come slightly to the left of it and about a quarter of an inch above where we stopped. So this is where I stopped here. I'm just gonna go up about a quarter of an inch and over to the left slightly. I'm gonna start stitching here, back stitching at the beginning and just stitch the remainder of my seam closed. I'm going to back stitch and then continue stitching the seam. Do that for about three inches and then you can pop back on your regular pressing foot, your regular presser foot. Put my needle back in the center. And I'm gonna continue sewing. You should be on a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so I have the center back seam of my dress sewn and I also went ahead and pressed my seam open flat. The next thing that we're gonna do is come up here and start to close up the ruffle. Now again, we should have left some open for the zipper to be installed. So now that the zipper is installed, now we can go ahead and take the edge of the ruffle here, which you should have stitched this edge of the ruffle closed. And now we can just pin it right here to the back opening like so. So it should just match right up to the back of the zipper. Okay, now we can go ahead and base both of the ruffles down to the back. Okay, so I have a quick correction. First I pinned it having the zipper teeth folded to the inside and then I accidentally stitched it but then I thought, wait a minute, I need to put my lining over this. So then I just stitched it right up to the zipper teeth. Do not stitch your seam allowance down. Keep that open because again, we're about to grab our lining fabric and place it over the top of that like so. So make sure that you do not stitch it down because then you won't be able to bring your lining over on top of it to close it down in place. Now that we have the ruffle based it down, we can grab our lining and put our lining over it like so. We can grab our pins. And now we can stitch this in place. You can pick up from your previous stitch here and just continue stitching all the way over. Make sure that, again, you have your ruffle sandwiched between your lining and your fabric. Okay, now that we have the remaining of the lining stitched down, now you can go ahead and do the remaining understitch as well. You want to just pick up where you left off at, and then you can also trim away your seam here. 
before we did not trim the portion that was not stitched. So now we can go ahead and trim that since we have it stitched. Remember, go back and do your understitching as well. Just pick up from your previous stitch and continue to do your understitching. The next step that we're going to do is we're going to pin the back opening edges together. Make sure that you keep your ruffle free. So I'm just gonna take my lining here and I'm gonna place it right on top like so. Matching up the raw edges is gonna go over the zipper teeth and it will look like so. I also went ahead and pressed up the seam allowance on my lining. You can go ahead and press up your 5 8 of an inch seam allowance here. That way when you pin it, it's already folded and then you'll be able to try to give you a look at what it will look like once you have it stitched down to the zipper tape. It'll be folded over your seam allowance like so. So go ahead and pin the opening edges together. Again, keeping that ruffle free and out of the way. Go ahead and pin it together. And we're gonna stitch down here right along the zipper tape. Let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, I have my lining stitched on along the zipper tape. I'm going to go ahead and trim off the top corner here so it's not too bulky up there. Make sure everything looks nice and neat. So this is how it looks up here along the top and the back. I'm going to zip this closed. And that's really pretty in the back. That's a really nice clean opening. I like that. This is how it looks on the inside here along the inside of my lining. Again, I didn't use a zipper foot. So if you use yours, you may be able to get even closer to your tape here along the inside so that the inside looks even more like invisible, but you will still see the, the zipper teeth, obviously the coils. But yeah, I just use my regular zipper foot and I'm totally fine with that. I'm gonna go ahead and unzip the dress because the next step for us to do is to do slip stitching. So we need to bring this pressed edge here of our lining over our seam allowance here like so. And we need to stitch our lining close. So you can go ahead and pin the pressed edge of your lining over your seam, your waistline seam, grab a needle and thread and you can go ahead and slip stitch this close or you can stitch in the ditch if you prefer to do that. So go ahead and close up your lining along the inside now. I went ahead and did the stitch in the ditch and on the outside, this is what it looks like here. You can't see the stitch, you can barely see it. I mean, if you're really close, you can see it kind of right up, up under there, but it's a really nice clean finish and it's a really nice option as opposed to the slip stitch if you prefer machine sewing over hand sewing. So now that we have that complete, I'm going to go ahead and zip up my dress. I have some loose threads here I need to remove. Okay, now go ahead and zip up my dress. And the last thing for us to do is the hem. So if you have the slit in the skirt, we are going to first, I went ahead and searched up my hem. So we can press up and do a 5 8 of an inch narrow hem on the lower edge of the hem. And then over here for the slit, we're just gonna do the same thing, a 5 8 of an inch narrow hem. You will stitch all the way up, go past the dot here by a quarter of an inch, pivot, and then come back down the other side of your slit doing a narrow hem. So once you have your narrow hems sewn, you are all done with your dress. Well, that is all for the video. Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, let me know down below. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notifications so you do not miss when the next video goes live. The next video goes live on Sunday and I'm going to be answering some of you all sewing questions. So if you are new here and you have a sewing question that you would like to ask me, I have a Google form down in the description box that you can fill out and I will answer your questions. If not this Sunday, the next Sunday, the Google form will stay open. So we'll just keep questions coming every Sunday I will answer. All right, y'all, that is all for today. Thank you all so much again for watching and I will see you all in the next one. Blessings everyone, bye.
Thank you so much for watching the video. Be sure to check out these two playlists here if you are interested in more sewing content. Check my blog out at BrittanyJJones.com and make sure that you subscribe to the channel so you know when the next video goes live. Until next time, blessings, bye.